Well, folks, I'm a pretty happy camper. I scored big this past weekend. Uh, picked myself up this trailer. It is a US Cargo 5x8. It's a model year 2000, so yes, 21 year old trailer. But as you can see, it is in phenomenal condition. Phenomenal. Uh, other than some sap on the fenders from where it was stored at the previous owner's house, there is virtually nothing wrong with it. It's a very basic flatbed with removable wooden sides and a nice loading ramp tailgate. So there's a few things that are missing that I would like to have in a trailer. So this video is gonna be about putting some of those things onto the trailer. Um, the first is I want a tra uh, an actual tongue jack with a wheel. So we're gonna replace the standard uh, tongue jack here. I apologize, I'm pausing because there's a lot of traffic going by. Um, we're gonna replace the, the jack that's installed on it with one that has a wheel and is a side mount to the side of the A-frame tongue. So we'll get that going here in a little bit. Um, I also wanted to install some D-rings in the bed because the bed has no method of cargo securing at all. So we're gonna, I bought some nice heavy duty D-rings. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, the uh, tailgate, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. The tailgate does not have the brackets with it to hold it in place. So I had to strap the tailgate closed on the way home. Um, the pins are there, the mounting posts are there, everything's there except for the flat uh, pieces of metal, the flat stock that gets used to hold the tailgate closed. So we're actually gonna we're gonna discuss that in a little bit, but we're gonna we're gonna craft our own to make that work, and I'll show you how that turns out. Um, yeah, and that's gonna be it for this video. Down the road, I'm gonna do a toolbox and a spare tire mounting kit as well, but I'll, I'll save those for another video. Stay tuned. So I did the research online, and the cheapest that I found for just one of these uh, ramp stabilizers was, I think, $29, and the most expensive was around $42, and that was for just one. So you're looking at, you know, just less than 60 bucks to 80 bucks for a pair of them. Um, that to me is just untenable. I don't, I don't see the point in spending that much money for something that we can easily make ourselves. So instead we went to Lowe's, picked up two 36 inch lengths of flat stock, just quarter inch by one and a half inch wide by three feet flat stock. And we're just gonna use our handy dandy hacksaw here, cut them down to the length that I need, which for my particular trailer, uh, the holes that I need are 24 inches on center. So I'm gonna cut them, cut these down to 26 inch lengths. So that'll give me a little bit of room on each end to play with. And then uh, after I cut them down to length and drill the holes, I'm gonna use my grinding wheel and round out the edges just to give them a little bit of a nicer look. And then we're gonna paint them black to match the frame of the trailer. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna put on video me hacksawing. Y'all don't need to see that. I'm pretty sure you know how to operate a hacksaw. So I will see you back around on the other end. Okay, so with both lengths cut to 26 inches end to end, I know that my post holes need to be 24 inches on center from each other. So with a 26 inch length, I gave myself an inch on each side that I will go in to make my mark. So if I just put that on the five there, just as a, as a marking point, and I just go in an inch. Okay, there's my first mark, just as a reference. I'll, I'll clean that up after. And then same thing here, just putting my little ruler down, just making my initial mark. So that's my one inch. And now I can start to center that up and drill through it. So for the drilling, um, we're gonna start with a smaller bit because we know it's gonna be easier to get through the metal with a smaller bit first. And then we'll work our way up to a couple of larger bits until we get up to our half inch. Um, and then I gotta see if I have something slightly larger because my hole is gonna have to be um, more like about 9 16 of an inch instead of a half inch. But I'll, uh, I'll see what I have in the drill bit drawer and go from there. Okay, so we're gonna, we made our rough mark. Now we're gonna center our mark just so we have a target to aim for with our first bit. So I'm just setting the, uh, we know this is one and a half inch wide 
stock, so I know it needs to be three quarters from the edge in, in order to be in center. So just gonna make that measurement here real quick and tidy up, that'll be right there. And that gives me my center mark. By the way, drilling, cutting, working with steel, tools, all of that nature. Um, I've said it before in my previous videos, but safety glasses, protect those eyes. You only get two of them. Not uncommon in that last little bit to catch on the burrs coming out the other side. So you just need to clean that up a little bit so that you can keep your drill running. You can do that by going in at an angle, which I'm gonna do anyways, because the pins on the trailer are exactly a half inch uh, diameter. And so I need my holes to be just slightly larger than that for ease of putting the stock on, taking it off when I'm working with the ramp. So I don't have a 916 bit like I was hoping I do, but that's okay, we're gonna do a little bit of a just rounding out of the hole using our half inch and that'll that'll get us where we need to be quick measurement of our hole width and we're actually a little bit over 9 16 so that should be perfect okay next stage we're going to clean up our shavings and then we're going to take the flat stock to the wheel grinder. And basically what we're looking to do on the bench grinder is uh, clean up the holes just to get the burrs off and get them, get them a little more user friendly. Uh, and I will probably also take a uh, file just to the inside of the holes just to make sure there's no burrs inside the holes. The second thing I want to do, uh, I like appearances. Appearances are important to me. So I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to bevel the edge um, bevel probably isn't the right term in this case, but I'm going to round off the edges of these just to give them a little bit of a nicer appearance. And then once that's done, we'll uh, move on to spray painting them black to match the trailer. So there's the tailgate mounting brackets that we made, all nice and painted. A couple of coats of polyurethane on them for protection. I think they came out pretty nice.
like that. And like that. Et voila. So now we're going to tackle the next thing that I want to get done to this trailer, which is installing D-rings. Right now, around the perimeter of the trailer, there's absolutely no method for uh, attaching any kind of loading straps or any sort of safety paraphernalia to uh, keep your cargo secure. So I went out and I bought a bunch of D-rings. This particular one is a, made by a company called Keeper. They're one and a half inch D-rings. They are rated with a... Uh, 1600 pound working load limit and a 5,000 pound brake strength. Now, the important thing to realize is that that uh, load uh, working load limit and brake strength uh, really are not going to come into play on this trailer because I'm putting them onto wooden deck planking, and that wooden deck planking is going to be a lot weaker than these steel D rings are. But that's okay. The only thing I ever anticipate using this trailer for is loading my John Deere lawn tractor onto it um, so that we can go back and forth between our properties and, and mow the grass and whatnot. So anyways, um, let's get to it. These are going to be a super easy installation. You have your D-ring, you have your molded bracket. You do have to buy your hardware separately. So I get 3 8 inch. Uh, carriage bolts, flat washers, and nuts. And let me show you how simple this is to, to install. So for the corner D-rings, I want them at an angle. So the front D-rings and the rear D-rings are going to be canted at a 45 degree angle to the corner to make load strapping easier. I'm also going to put a D-ring at the midpoint on each side of the tractor, uh, excuse me, of the trailer, but those are going to be mounted this way so that the pool is going uh, laterally across the trailer. So that should work out pretty well. Okay, real easy. Drill, find your position where you want to mount it. easy. Get all of our wood chips out of there because we don't want to be squeezing wood chips between the bracket and the floorboards. I don't anyways. Put your carriage bolt through. All right. Now let's go underneath and see what we got. All right, so up here underneath the trailer, this is gonna be a little wobbly, I apologize, because uh, the trailer front is real close to the ground, so I don't have enough room to put my tripod. But this is where your bolts come down. Put a nice big flat washer. And then your nut. And the bigger and stronger the flat washer, the better. Uh, the reason for that is because it's it's all about uh, load distribution. So if we if we don't put any kind of a sizable washer on the bottom of these carriage bolts, which are going through simple deck planking, then any kind of load that you put on these D-rings, you run the risk of it just pulling the carriage bolts right through the wood. By putting a large, heavy-duty washer or two, sometimes when I'm doing this, uh, depending on the strength of the wood, I might put two on there. Uh, it just, it gives it a much better load distribution. So when you're pulling up on that D-ring, it does not want to just pull the bolt right through the floorboard. So just like that, easy peasy. The nuts that I'm using are 9 16 or 14 millimeter. Of course, you can use either one. I think I have a 14 millimeter going right now. I'm just gonna snug them up. 
really good and snug. You want to draw the square shank of that carriage bolt down into the wood. That's what, why carriage bolts are designed the way that they are, is so that that square shank really compresses right into the wood, just like that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other one off camera. You guys get it. And there you go. That's your good solid D-ring mounted and ready to go. Now I'm going to do the uh, back corners and the sides. I'll do those off camera and show you what it looks like when we're done. And there we go. D-rings installed. At least on the corners. I have not done the side ones yet, but you don't need to see those in the... Uh, in the video to understand what's going on with them. So now we can load up the tractor and anything else that we might need to, to haul. And we know that we have a, a decently secure mounting point. Again, the wood is gonna be the limiting factor on, on the weight uh, and load capability of the trailer. So we have to understand that. I know that these D-rings at their 1600 pound load rating you know, that's, that's going to far exceed what the wood will take care of. So just keep that in mind when you're designing your own trailer, how you're going to put everything. I like it. Okay, so now for our next trick, we're going to get this trailer jack installed. Um, saw a lot of uh, videos on YouTube and reviews on Amazon and the Lowe's website that all seem pretty happy with this Reese trailer jack. So, you know, a couple, couple negative nits here and there but for the most part the reviews were pretty overwhelmingly positive so i decided to go ahead grab it um it was 50 bucks 49 dollars and something at our local hardware store you can get it for several bucks cheaper on amazon or at lowe's but um, we have a small town hardware store goffstown ace hardware here in goffstown new hampshire that um, i like to support whenever possible so i don't mind spending the extra few bucks let's see how we do with it All right, now I expect the installation of this is gonna be pretty easy. Uh, I've already staged out my tools based on the nuts and bolts that are a part of the assemblage. Um, it looks to me like all we're going to need is a 14 millimeter socket and wrench, 17 millimeter socket and wrench, and 19 millimeter socket and wrench. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this caster on. Pop off your bolt and sleeve. Pop your sleeve into your caster wheel, like so. And then just put the nut back on. <clears throat> and now uh, that one should be a 17 millimeter. So we'll take our 17 millimeter ratchet and wrench combination and just snug those down. Oop, I lied. Those ones are the 19 millimeter. Sorry about that. So there's actually the 19 that we want for the caster. And this is a nylock nut, so you're going to be threading into the nylon on the nut, which makes it a little bit more snug than usual. Let's just snug that down. From there, the nylon can do its job. You don't need to you don't need to really reef on that. Um, just let the nylock do its work. All right. So on the bracket for the jack, you see that they give you multiple mounting holes on one side and a standalone hole on the other end. That's the same on both of them. That corresponds to the mounting bracket that's on the jack itself. So when you mount it, you're going to put the single hole with the single hole, and then you have a little bit of flexibility with your bolts on the bottom thanks to having two holes down here and four holes on the bracket itself. So I'm going to get this started. 
so that I can get it uh, draped over the top of the of the uh, tongue on the trailer, the tongue frame. And then we're going to lower the jack to the ground so that it holds itself up because it's a bit of a pain in the neck otherwise trying to match the, the height of the jack to where you're trying to mount it. Bring this up to right about where it needs to be. Drape these over the back. Um, I have on my trailer, my wiring harness is right on the back side of this part of the frame, so I want to be careful not to not to pinch my harness in there when I do the installation. And there we go. So that's that brings that just about up where I need it. Like so. Okay, that works. So now we can run our next pair of bolts through. And there's the trailer jack with wheel fully installed. Again, just a reminder, we had some technical difficulties with the camera earlier. So we are working out here in the rain today. And I was not about to wait for the camera issues to resolve themselves. I needed to get the work done because it's been raining all day. And we've been out here working in it. But it's a simple installation. So I don't think most of y'all really needed the step-by-step. -step. I'll just show you here. There's your brackets on the back. Get that to focus. There's your uh, bolts that come through with the nylock nuts on it and just tighten them down really good and snug because they're what's doing all the work of holding that jack on. Uh, be careful about having your jack positioned too far to the rear. Ideally you want it to be up here closer to the front of the front of the uh, tongue and the reason mine is situated just a little bit further back is because they have the uh, vehicle identification plate right here and I didn't want to cover it up. So uh, I also since the camera died and I got it installed, I also took off the original jack like I said I was going to do. That was easy, just three little bolts right there. There's no nuts on the bottom, they just thread right into the frame. And those just popped right out, easy peasy. And that's it. Alright, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties with our recording device here, so... Um, I got to kind of jump around a little bit because the camera had stopped and I didn't realize it. So basically what's going on here is the wiring harness for the trailer, uh, the connector, let me grab that again, the, the old connector here has some issues, try to get that to focus, um, that you might be able to see there where the, that green wire in particular is kind of flayed right open. So as a result, only half the trailer lights were working. That little crack in the wire is way too close to the connector for me to even attempt a splice. So we just went out and bought a new connector, four pin connector. Most of these off the shelf four pin connectors are four wire pigtails. Whereas the, this particular trailer is wired with a five wire harness. So that uh, additional wiring is to accommodate the side marker lights, which I know some trailers don't have. That's why the uh, more basic trailers have a four wire harness, but this trailer does have the side marker lights. So we've got to make that work. So this is going to be easy for the first three wires because all we're going to be doing is like for like. So white to white, yellow to yellow, green to green. And then I'll show you what to do with the brown wires in a moment. So we're just going to splice these together. You can use inline connectors if you want. Um, I usually just do an easy splice, take my heat shrink, which is already pre-staged on the, on the uh, wire. And I'm actually going to go up a size on the heat shrink because that joint is a little bit bigger than I had anticipated. Try that again. So again, you can you can do uh, inline crimp connectors, or you can just do simple splices. The the end goal should just be having a conductor 
that is operating at peak efficiency and is going to allow that signal to get from the connector down through the harness and to the lighting. That's what you're looking for in the end. So yellow to yellow, white to white, green to green. That's what we're looking for. Um, I want to try to keep things as tidy as possible. So let's see, white out on that side and yellow and there's my green. Let's bring the green over to this side like this. And make sure that you're actually getting the green wire and not the, not the uh, green and brown wire by mistake. Let's give those a few wraps around each other. Fold that over and slide your heat shrink up. And same thing. I'm, same trouble with the heat shrink. That size is just too small for what we're doing here. that one ready. All right, so now we need to do our yellow brown and our green brown. And both of those are going to get spliced to the brown wire on the pigtail. If I can actually get a hold of it, that is. So for this, we're going to be doing a three-way splice. There you go, that's your nice three-way braided splice. Slide that heat shrink up on there. All right, now you can use a, a heat gun, a blow dryer, a torch, whatever you happen to have available. Just get your heat shrink shrunken down. Nice thing about using a heat gun instead of a lighter is that a heat gun you can attack the heat shrink from any side whereas a lighter you're limited to the fact that the flame wants to go up all the time so this is just kind of the backyard mechanics way of getting it done but as with anything in life there are actually better ways to do it but this gets it done and pretty quickly too one, two, three, four. I think that's all four of them. Oh, there's one. Did miss one. Okay, there we go. So those are secure. I actually want to close up this one on the ends just a little bit more than what it is. Okay, there we go. Nothing peeking through, so we're good. All right, so now let's go test some lights. So we're gonna start the truck that I've already backed up to the trailer, and we're gonna turn its lights on, and we're gonna see if we have lights. And we got lights. 
like we got tail lights, we got side marker lights over here. We got a tail light, and we got a side marker light. All right, let's uh, let's do a lighting check. See how we look. Brake. Ooh, yeah, that works. Yep, left signal. Boom. Right signal. It is the 4th of July, friends, which means fireworks are going off, so it's pretty funny that I said boom right when that firework went off in the background. Okay, we're good. Kill it. Well, thanks for watching the video, folks. That's our trailer improvements for today. Watch for the next video where we do the spare tire mount and the toolbox mount. Cheers.